Yes, my name is Jose Che Perez. Um, I am a representative from the District 18 of Puerto Rico. Um, I represent 125,000 people from the cities of Aguada, Añasco, Moca, Rincón, and Mayagüez at the west side of the island of Puerto Rico. Um, I belong from, to the New Progressive Party. The New Progressive Party is a pro-state party. We want to become a state of the United States of America. My name is Maria de Lourdes Santiago. I am the vice president of the Puerto Rican Independence Party and I was the candidate for governor for the elections in 2016. Uh, the Puerto Rican Independence Party was founded in 1946 and we've been since struggling for independence. Puerto Rico is a colony of the United States. We were invaded in 1898 and since then uh, even though several federal laws have passed uh, dictating our relationship with the United States, well still we are uh, just a colony. My name is Manuel Natal Alvelo. I'm a representative at large in Puerto Rico's House of Representatives and I represent here the Popular Democratic Party. My party was founded in 1938 and it's a party that helped negotiate the current relationship of Puerto Rico with the United States. For, for us education is very important as we are having very very huge economical problem right now we're making a restructure of the of the whole system of education in all levels so because we want to have more achievement on the students we want to introduce and make all the school bilingual school all trilingual school we think that reform of the public education should be a central issue i am a uh, a huge believer in democratic education where uh, students have uh, a say in what they are studying, where every school is able to design their own curriculum and I think that's the direction where Puerto Rican education should be going. Well, the main focus of our party right now in terms of education is to improve um, the quality of education but also to improve uh, the salary and working conditions of uh, the teachers. As we know in Puerto Rico, unfortunately, the teachers are uh, one of the, I guess, least compensated groups or, or, or are compensated in, I, I would say, unjust terms. Uh, I think we are trying to fight against uh, the privatization of our public school system, uh, particularly given our current economic situation and the austerity policies that have been implemented by several governments that have resulted in the closing of schools. We are a colony of the United States, so we depend in many ways of what they give us. Now we are, we are facing a problem with a medical found team at the United States, so the president did not include us, the island, to receive more than a billion dollars for medical health care so we are going to lose a 65 percent of the fund of Medicaid Medicare for the people so that represents that maybe if we don't found this money uh, more than a million people is going to lose the health care program. We've been uh, proposing a universal health care plan uh, similar to the one in Canada and in other places in the world where everyone would contribute uh, according to their means and in which basic health care would be available in the same conditions to everyone. Uh, here, just as in the US, uh, well, health is such a huge business. Uh, in Puerto Rico, actually, every year a huge amount of money is spent in, in health, health care, uh, approximately, uh, approximately $10,877 million. That's a lot of money for a small country with a really, really poor system of health care. Well, this, this is a huge debate in Puerto Rico. Um, 
health healthcare in Puerto Rico is is one of our biggest concerns, um, given that we have a health system that was transformed in the late nineties, and it was a health system that the insurance companies were given a lot of control and power, and those insurance companies have exercised that power within the the two main parties here in Puerto Rico, including my party, um, but obviously there's a faction of my party that's fighting for universal health care. Uh, the problem that we have, it's of this genesis of the economic problem right now and of the problem of the status of Puerto Rico. Being a colony, it's an unfair situation that we are having because we don't have access to the power, we don't have access to the phone, phones, that we have and we serve from the states. So that tells of the, the economic problems. So in the past, the last government have to cut the, the pensions from the, from the people of the island. Pension funds in Puerto Rico uh, have been subject, have been the victims of uh, many, many uh, fraudulent actions. I don't think there is any other way to put it. And that means that uh, pension funds will run out by 2019, less than two years. So the government is proposing a cut on pensions. But when we're talking about pensions, uh, many elderly people in Puerto Rico, uh, and the cost of living here is very high, right now receive pensions under a thousand dollars and that's not long, that's not enough pensions and many other rights that workers that university students that are older people have have been cut and have been cut given the fiscal crisis that puerto rico has been going through the economic crisis that puerto rico has been going through but unfortunately uh, given the austerity policies that different governments have implemented in Puerto Rico. And for the last decade or so, governments have decided over and over again to cut on different social programs uh, rather than cutting on what's being paid to our bondholders. We are making different laws to have the equal payment to the women. We, we passed a bill a, a few months ago to, to maintain, to retain all the doctors of the island, giving benefits um, to make that attractive from the, to, the, to the doctor of the island to don't live to the other states. So, and now we are trying to make a different programs with a with partnership with the private sector to increase the, the employment opportunity in tourism, um, service, and with the academics. In the pharmaceutical sector, there are many opportunities uh, for us uh, since we have not only the facilities, physical facilities, uh, uh, duly certified, but also a lot of professionals in that field. Uh, we create a strong local economy. We produce uh, with uh, the small businesses here in Puerto Rico that produce jobs in Puerto Rico, that produce um, riquezas in Puerto Rico, uh, riches, and, and, and that is we invested in Puerto Rico rather than taken out of Puerto Rico. We need to work together, no matter if, if we became um, if we became a republic and in the future, no matter if we stayed as a colony, we have to work together to have a better country right now. But what we deserve is have equal rights. What we deserve is to be treated as equal citizens of the United States that we are right now. That's why me and my party, we are fighting to become a state because that's what we deserve. We went to the same war, we pay taxes, we give them our best human resources. So what we deserve is to be, treat, uh, be treated equal and have the same representation of the other states from the United States. We are 3.5 million U.S. citizens that deserve to have a 
the representation of the Congress, the two Senate, and that we deserve to have the vote for the president. We can, but we can't be anymore is a colony. It's an unfair situation, and we're going to change that. I can assure you that. Uh, sooner than later, we're going to be, we, we're not going to be a colony. How long can we survive being a colony? We are the last colony in the world. There's not an important matter that affects our life in which we have anything to say. We have a wonderful country and is now facing bankruptcy. There doesn't seem to be a solution to the fiscal problems and that is happening because there is, there is no possible material progress under colonialism. That's how it works. When you talk about the current relationship with Puerto Rico with the United States, a lot of people say, well, we couldn't survive if we're not with the United States because of the, of the federal money that we'd receive, uh, because of, of all the different help that we might receive from the United States. Well, in reality, what comes in is way less than what goes out. It's the beauty of the island, our beaches, our mountains, our nature, um, the culture that we have our mixed culture that, that become a really, really, really interesting culture that it's really rich and the other thing is the people of Puerto Rico. A kind people, a lovely people that live in a very, 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 very beautiful paradise. You have to look around and you can, I can prove that. We're very lucky, we're very blessed. We've been a colony of the United States for 119 years and still we think in Spanish, we speak in Spanish, we dream in Spanish. I think uh, that persistence of our nationality is one of, uh, is one of the great accomplishments of a nation that has uh, been under uh, the colonial rule of the United States. The first thing that I would say is one of the best things about Puerto Rico it's its people, it's its capacity, it's its sense of solidarity. The second thing that I would say it's one of the best things about uh, Puerto Rico is the resilience, it's the, the resistance. It's like I mentioned before, we are a country, we are people that have been told for so long that we're not good enough, that that we cannot make it on our own. And there's a lot of people in, in this beautiful island that would not simply give up and that keep on fighting and, and that keep on fighting for a better Puerto Rico, keep on fighting for, for a Puerto Rico in, in, in which the Puerto Ricans have a say. Um, and, and that resiliency and, and that resistance, uh, I think it's, it's something that we can incorporate in, in many ways of our lives. It's not only the fight that we fight here in Puerto Rico, but it's the fight that we fight as professionals, as athletes, as uh, uh, celebrities, you know? And, 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 and that's something that I think you see in, in many, many Puerto Ricans, regardless of, of where they are. Uh, and the last thing I would say that is, is the best thing about Puerto Rico is that I believe that given all that history that I have mentioned, we have more future than past. We are a country that has more future than past and there are very few nations that can say that uh, because given everything that we have been submitted to, given everything that has been thrown our way and we are still here, I can only think of a bright future for Puerto Rico and, and I think our future uh, represents more hope than our past.